Welcome to the Rusted Garden Homestead. In today's episode of Friday Morning Ramblings, I'm just going to walk through the garden, really talk about putting your beds to sleep. I just did a video on that, but I'll, you know, give a little bit more details. So this is the side that I always get to last. So next year, I'm going to try and start here and fix up the beds, but you'll see what I mean when I get to the other side. A couple of things, the Rusted Guarded Red Towers will be on sale again December 6th. So this is a little bit of a, um, early notice. They are limited. They will sell out quickly. I hope they did last year. So if you're interested in picking these up, check the video description for details and use the code, the rusted garden and save some money. But the red color is exclusive to the rusted garden. I love that color. I'll be changing this up. I'll be doing a whole series on growing vertically next year, um, right in that space. So it's December 4th. I have a couple things. These are my cold frames and I want to show you something cool. This one automatically opens when it gets warm enough. Things have been growing in here through the frost really, really well. This is where I'm going to seed start my cool weather crops. I'm not going to be doing them indoor this year um, because the warmth of the house makes those cool weather crop seedlings get too spindly. They're just not healthy. So I'm going to be setting up a plan to grow in here and in some other places I'll show you. And you can see the tomatoes are all, you know, killed off from the frost we were having. However, well, if we dig down here, you can see the tomato plants are still alive. Now they're not looking so good because there's not a lot of fertilizer in there, but it's been cold. But if you dig down to, well, maybe 12 to 18 inches, the earth stays warm. So in theory, I could have overwintered some peppers in here. I just was too slow getting to it. Or you could overwinter different crops and pots down here and it would stay perfectly okay because the ground temperature deeper down regulates the temperature. So what that means is the frost just doesn't get down there and those plants can survive over the winter in a lot of places. The space here, you know, looks pretty good. I'm happy with it. Did a lot of work to kind of get things in place for the winter and come spring I have plans to really change up things. Like this whole area is not going to be tomatoes anymore. The tomatoes are going to get moved down that way going to be growing cucumbers and beans up here, some different plants in here. Um, still working on that master plan. And if you notice, I have weeds coming up, the beds are kind of low, the compost and materials broke down and got used up. I will just be filling these up with leaves. And you know, here we are to the part of the garden I didn't get to. You can cover leaves right over weeds if you want. You can weed later. The whole idea that I stressed in the last video was to get your bed set up just like that with leaves, organic fertilizers, other amendments if you have it, and put them to sleep. I highly recommend it. I keep stressing it. Your garden will love you for it. We'll walk down there in a second. One thing that I'm keeping in place is the sunken container garden. If people ask me questions, what size are those containers? They're probably eight to 10 gallon containers. I grow two plants in each of those. The bottoms are cut out. This single strip will allow me to grow 38 pepper plants. And I'm only gonna grow pepper plants in here this year. Um, <laughs> I think I'll probably end up tucking some in other places. But I'm trying to concentrate my vegetables together better fashion because I'm going to really try and eat out of the garden for most of the year minus buying proteins or you know going out to dinner every once in a while but in doing that I really want to organize my garden better so that I have to do less work in there the garlic is in this will get mulched up don't worry people keep asking what if my garlic has sprouted up it's fine this is all going to get beat up in the winters i'm in maryland zone seven if you don't know so we'll have snow while we'll freezing temperatures that greenery will get beat up but come spring it will be perfectly fine here in maryland you can still work the soil so if you were late for garlic you could go ahead and put that in this year i'm leaving my um fig plant uncovered we'll see what happens the wood's a little bit thicker um, the plant is, the tree is pretty big or the bush is pretty big. I'm going to see if it survives. This is not a Chicago hardy fig. Maryland's right on the border of having to wrap the figs or not. If I get too many consecutive days of freezing weather, 
this fig tree could be in trouble. However, the roots will survive and new growth will come up and I'll just make sure that I wrap it every year. It's just too big to wrap now. I don't want to cut it down and do all that kind of stuff. Blackberries are looking good. This will all get cleaned up. But I'm making a big shift from tomatoes growing everywhere here to growing a lot of tomatoes, but just not as many. And I want to make sure I grow what I can eat, give away, and have a little bit less waste. Although, I mean, I don't agree that I'm wasting food because this food would not be here if I didn't grow it. So I'm creating food. And whatever falls to the ground, regrows, dies off, brings nutrients back to the plants. But it has gotten me thinking that, you know, this is a pretty big space. But if each member of a community or, you know, a handful, a dozen or so of people that wanted to do this together, you know, you maybe just get that one bed like right there, or maybe two beds, and somebody just grows beans, another person grows squash, another person grows peppers, and you share the food, that would be a great way to build community. That would be a great way to take care of each other. And I'm kind of working on an idea to talk about in my uh, podcast and on my video series about trying to, you know, spring that kind of program up. They exist, but what I'm trying to do is figure out why they aren't flourishing. So I want to create a program where community members grow food together, they share food, you know, enough of that, but it'll get there. If you know of any programs like that, please leave me a comment. This is my asparagus patch. So it was the whole length of this space all the way down to where those four containers are up to that fencing. And it was just too much asparagus. I wasn't eating it. It was getting, you know, it gets about six feet tall, like this tall, branches out. You have to do that so the sun hits the leaves, refuels the roots, so to speak, so more asparagus comes. It was too much. So I dug it all out, gave it away, dropped in all these new beds, the new beds are going to be an area where I grow my root crops, so I'm looking forward to that. So I opened up a lot of the space of my garden by saying, you know what, I just don't need this asparagus anymore. How can I use that strip of the garden better? And I was losing everything over here. One, because I couldn't see it, it would get out of control. A lot of shade was coming in, more insects were coming in there because it was shaded out a little bit. So I got rid of the asparagus. Don't be afraid to change up your garden if you have to. So by doing that, this bed right here was already there. This one's a little bit blocked from everything right here. But more airflow comes in, more light comes in. So I've opened up this bed. I added one, two, three beds. This one is now more viable. So I've just created a whole lot of space. Did a video on these six containers, setting them up for the winter for growing peppers. This is an experimental area, meaning that I've added in some extra stuff I'll talk about. But I'm gonna grow my uh, sweet peppers in here this should be enough to supply me two plants per, that's 12 plants, um, and subscribe. You'll see how I grow in here. But this is basically granular fertilizer, alfalfa pellets, bone meal. This is compost, or this is cow manure on here that's not fully broken down. Here's another bit I'm working on. Sometimes you can just throw in your extra stuff that was extra cow manure. Just throw it onto the beds. Here's one that I got the leaves down yesterday. That's broccoli rob. I highly recommend that for a fall to winter crop. Um, it gets little buds on there like this. They're delicious. You can eat the leaves. You can just break off the bud and leaves, stir fry, put them in salads. Really, really good. Bok choy, pak choy. It bolts really fast in my area, but the flowers and the blooms on there are delicious. So you can kind of let that go and maybe not grow it so much for the leaves, but grow it for the blooms. I just tuck the leaves in all around the plants that are already growing, cover up the weeds, throw a few things down to keep the leaves from blowing away somewhat. The whole key, moisten it down. That being said, with the moisture, it's really important to make sure you keep wa watering your fall garden. Even though it's not as hot, the ground always looks damp, there may not be enough water in there. So I just watered these yesterday. And the reason you want to keep the water in is so the vegetables are nice and plump, so the leaves are nice and plump. Highly recommend the purple tops. I always talk about them. Great spring crop, great fall crop. Just keep the water going. You don't need as much, of course, 
if it's the summer. But, you know, once a week, a good soaking, if it hasn't rained, is really, really important. I like leaving up some of the, you know, plants that have died off and turned brown. Um, I like the look. I like when it snows and it's there. It makes for great pictures. Nice walk. I'm also, I'm also letting the beans dry on here, and I'll be collecting them at some point. And you can just, you know, rehydrate these, make soup out of them, they're delicious. I'll be collecting them at some point for that, you know. A tip that I've mentioned before is after you collect all your beans, put them in a Ziploc bag, throw them in a the freezer, just in case there's any eggs or insects in there, the freezing helps control them before you store them, you know, as a warm store or, you know, in your cupboard or something like that. If you have little sprouts coming out, you don't want to cover those up with lots of leaves. That's just a sprinkle of leaves on there. I have um, spinach and radishes coming up. I'm not going to do a lot of these cold frames for the winter. I'll be doing more come the spring. Like I really want to warm up the ground in certain areas. That's why you see when you put your tomatoes out early, your peppers out early, even though you grew great transplants inside, the ground is too cold and those peppers and tomatoes just struggle. So sometimes all that extra work we do is for nothing because a random <laughs> tomato seed that fell on the ground next to your transplant that you put out in April decides to start growing when the ground gets warm and that little straggler catches up to <laughs> all that to that plant that you put a lot of attention into growing as a transplant and getting out early. My point is, is a tomato that's bigger put out sooner isn't necessarily going to get bigger and better than a seed that's just sitting there that germinates outside when the soil temperature gets right. Soil temperature is a key to really getting your warm weather crops going and flourishing. And I'll do more about that. Um, I'll do more on that come the spring. And basically what I'm going to be doing is setting up cold frames like this that are bigger across the growing areas earlier in like March and letting the heat collect in air, letting it warm up the soil. And then I will protect the the pepper plants the whole time with something like this through March through April you know and then I'll take it off come May when the frost is supposed to be gone but in there I have spinach I have radishes in there they're all going really well you know I'm satisfied I've cleaned up a lot of the garden I've left a lot of the mess in the middle we'll talk about that Brussels sprouts are doing well kale collards they have some white fly issues um, white flies don't necessarily die off with a freeze and a frost so I'll have to take care of that but otherwise it's going pretty good celery is doing really well and this is what reminded me about the watering so these got watered yesterday but even when I pick this now it's not really plump because I just let it go too long without water. So make sure you get that water in there so that celery and your plants kind of, you know, fill up with water. They're much more delicious and they're not kind of tough and stringy. I've already, I think, harvested the broccoli out of here. This is purple broccoli. This will be a stir fry tonight. It's doing really well. And I'm gonna just grow broccoli in the fall. We'll get over to the cauliflower. I found broccoli does really well with the frost that we're having. The buds aren't soft from freezing. They can take the frost nice and firm. They're just looking really good after all this frost we had. Swiss chard, mainstay, looks beautiful. Colors get better in the cold. Taste gets better in the cold. So my goal was to get the leaves down. And sometimes, you know, we can get uh, kind of off track. Like all this has to be fixed and cleared out and stuff like that. Rather than saying, okay, now I gotta clear out all the okra, I gotta repair the trellises, I gotta move all this out. You can do that if you want, if you have the time. But right now, what's important is me getting the leaves down onto the earth, setting that up, and later, anytime, I can come back and get rid of this. Look at the okra, it looks beautiful. That would be a nice picture, actually. You can get rid of that later. Same thing, I threw everything onto the ground. I was, you know, a little bit pressed for time. This will get to the compost pile at some point, or it'll just lay there for the winter, dry up, crumble away, and it'll go into the earth. So don't overstress yourself with things having to be perfect. You wanna get those leaves in now. You could use hay if you don't, or straw, 
Uh, hay sometimes has more weed seeds. You could use straw if you don't have leaves in your area. You could cut grass, let that dry, use that as a mulch. But a lot of people say, I don't have leaves. Well, if you don't have leaves, you're probably in a climate where it's a little bit warmer and you probably don't have to go through this process. Yes, you still have to replenish your beds, but it would be done a little bit differently with fully composted materials and stuff like that. This is all set up because here in Maryland, these beds will sit. These beds will sit January, February, March, starting in April, I'll start planting. So this has a lot of time to break down, a lot of time for the worms to come in eat the leaves, leave worm castings. Even if this doesn't fully break down, you just sweep it away to the side, put in your transplants. Transplants will do perfectly fine actually in this stuff. You don't have to move it out of the way. Just dig a hole, put your transplant in. If you were doing seeds, you'd have to move it out of the way, have a little bit um, nicer soil, uh, yeah, nicer soil because the seedling has to be in the soil, not on the mulch or anything like that. I'll be doing videos on that. This is where I grew all my butternut squash. Those are just sitting up there. You know, I mean, how many butternut squash can you eat? I ended up with over 40 of them and gave a lot away. They're gonna go back in this space. That was a success. Here's just the, another view of the new beds that I opened up. That asparagus was all along that bench area. So that was just wasted space in there. Stepping in here are my root pouches. We do sell these. They're at the seed shop. I think the Black um, Friday sale is still, still going on, so you can get these at a discount. Your containers, you can do the same thing. Some granular fertilizer in there, some alfalfa pellets if you want. Put the mulch on top. If you don't have granular fertilizer or you don't have other things, at least get the leaves down. The leaves will be great for a mulch next year. They'll be great to feed the soil, all that kind of stuff. But it's a free resource, and I really encourage people not to get caught up in fancy packaging, you know, um, buying the stuff when you can kind of use it from your surrounding area. So this is usually how I walk into my garden this year for whatever reason, and I just start working here. So this side looks pretty good, and then the other side gets a little bit suspect looking. But I'm pretty happy December 4th, I'll have enough food here to really eat out uh, out of the garden for, you know, maybe another couple of weeks before the frost messes up stuff. Here's the reason I'm going to stick with broccoli and more broccoli, because I'm going to get rid of the cauliflower. It's managing okay. I thought this was collards number one, so please <laughs> label what you grow. I am always forgetting what I plant, and sometimes when these... Uh, cool weather crops come up, they look similar. I thought this was, uh, not kale, I thought this was actually collards. So some of the plants got killed off from the frost. The cauliflower is just not as strong as the broccoli for the fall into winter gardening. And there are some heads forming, but look. Those are, that's leaves on there that make them look like that. They're just kind of small. So the really hard frost is gonna, I mean the hard frost and freeze is gonna come soon here. And I don't think these are gonna really make it or get to size. So I'm not gonna do cauliflower in the fall next year. And keep a list, you know, don't, after you experiment, after you try, if something doesn't thrive, just take it off your list, you know, replace it or try it at a different time. Cabbage is doing well. The heads are starting to form. I only did five. Years ago I was doing, trying to do like 10 or 12 or something like that. Don't overgrow what you're not gonna use or what you don't have space for. This will be perfect. I'll enjoy making, you know, a winter coleslaw out of this. Let's go over to the compost pile real quick. And you might be tired hearing me talk about compost and leaves. And the reason I do that is because it's so important for the garden. Now, organic fertilizers, the granular type, isn't enough bulky or organic material. It's not enough leaves, not enough grass, not enough compost to really supply your garden with what it needs. It's great for N, P, and K, but you want compost. You want all this matter, this vegetation broken down. And this is my no-dig garden. I've been just throwing compost on here and growing really, really well. In fact, so well, I mean, more potatoes came up than I could eat. So this is gonna be where I put in potatoes. 
I'm not going to be growing potatoes really in containers throughout the garden. That just wasn't practical and didn't make sense because I could just do a big row of potatoes, get a bigger harvest, and it was a lot easier for me to care for them right here than to, you know, pop around to different containers. Organic matter. You really want to add that to your garden. That's what helps hold moisture. That's what feeds the worms. That's what feeds the soil microbiology, all that stuff I've been saying. But it's more important, good compost is more important than some fancy organic granular fertilizer. Everything survives off of decaying matter. Look at a forest floor, you know, kind of mimic nature, work with nature. So coming over to here and let's just take a look. You know, I think this looks pretty nice for December 4th. So I'm satisfied with my 2021 season. I feel like I kept up with the garden enough, got, garden enough, got my energy back. It's in shape for 2022. And now I'm getting excited for seed starting and really kind of planning out what I'm gonna do next year. This is elaborate. You don't need this, just a single pen if you have the room. You could do something like this. This is what you want to get to at some point is producing your own compost out of whatever materials you have. It's going to go a long way in making great soil. It will save you money. You won't need as much organic granular fertilizers. This is going to be compost. It's going to get moved over there. These were straw bales that have pretty much broken down. That one was in the middle, so it didn't break down as much. But I bought these last October for Halloween, stacked them here. They've been breaking down. They were $5 a bale, which is a pretty good price. Go to a farm, don't go to Home Depot, you'll pay twice as much. And you can let uh, straw bales just decompose and that can become compost if you don't have access to leaves like this or a lot of grass. I mean, this is wonderful. This will be a great mulch. Um, It'll break down, it'll get back to the garden and all that. And again, I'm not going to go over this, I've showed you this, in, well, maybe I will. This I love because this is a year old and it's just amazing leaf compost. And it's full of worms and baby worms and all kinds of stuff. And I will just keep doing that. Fill this up in October. Come next October, I'll dump it into here, fill it up again, and pretty soon this would be nothing but decomposed leaves, perfect for my containers. So it is a process that you're building compost bins, supply over the years, you're giving it to your garden as you get it over the years, but it's not, you know, I gotta do all this in one year. I gotta have the perfect beds set up with all the right amounts of compost. That just doesn't happen. Just try and go a little bit each year, you know, and see where your garden is a couple years from now. The mushroom garden, all set up. This will get cleaned up a little bit. These bales will become compost. New bales will go in here for the mushrooms. And you get the idea of how I'm using different resources to build composts, mulches. This garden's gonna be completely different this year. I forgot that I had potatoes there. Like I had, I just grew them all over. Success, which is wonderful, but now I'm gonna grow more strategically so I don't have them just kind of sitting there. Arugula is a great cool weather crop. That's another wave of arugula in there. Some radishes, we'll see how that goes. Squirrels actually got in here and devastated that bed. That was supposed to be kohlrabi. But I have a lot of space. Looking forward to 2022. Hope you guys are sitting down thinking about new designs, changes, just having fun with kind of creating in your garden. That's what it's all about. It's about producing the food, of course, but it's also about just enjoying the process, sharing your garden. I am grateful that I have all of you to talk to, in a way, um, but really comment. That's why I respond to so many of my com uh, so many comments that come because I just like sharing the gardens. Please check out my seed shop at therustedgarden.com and thanks for watching.